Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss real gases. So today's the central question. How do real gases deviate from the ideal gas law? Ideal gases. Under certain conditions, real gases behave like an ideal gas. This is when the volume of the, of the gas particles is small compared to the space between them. Okay, so that basically what I'm saying, a backwards way of saying that there's a lot of space between each of the gas particles. The forces between the gas particles are not significant. Um, and at STP, the assumptions of the ideal gas are valid for most common gases. The assumptions of the ideal gas break down when a real gas is at low temperatures or high pressures. So now let's talk about deviations from ideal behavior. So when gases are put under great pressure and they're cooled, the gas particles become closely packed together, leading to their molecular arrangement to be more like a liquid. They're, yeah, they're, they're smushed into a very tight space. At this point, gases deviate from ideal gas behavior and are said to be real gases. When the gas is squeezed or pressurized into a very small space, the gas particle size becomes more significant compared to the total volume. So the assumption, and here we're talking about the kinetic molecular theory assumptions, KMT. So the KMT assumption that gases are composed of tiny particles whose size is negligible compared to the distance between them begins to fail. At low temperatures, um, Gas particles have less energy, so the particles actually, they're not moving around as much, they're closer together, and the particles actually become attracted to one another. So the KMT assumption that the forces of attraction or repulsion between two gas particles are very weak or negligible begins to fail. All right, so what do we do if we know three of the four variables affecting gas behavior and we have the desire to calculate the quantity of the fourth variable but we're using a real gas not under ideal conditions. Well, in comes van der Waals equation. So a correcting factor needs to be used for real gases when it, using the ideal gas law. So to correct for volume of, of gas particles the volume is subtracted by N B, where N is the number of moles and B is a constant that depends on the, the identity of the gas. So that means to figure out what, D, what B is, you're going to need to look at a table. Okay. To correct for pressure of gas particles, the pressure is added by this thing here, A times N over V squared, where again, N is the number of moles, V is the volume, and not A, please don't write A, don't write B, A is a constant that depends on the gas. And A is to, to use A, to, to use A N over V squared, you need to look up A on a table. Okay, so let's go back and review the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. And then if we add our corrections in, we get the van der Waals equation. So the van der Waals equations for a gas under non-ideal conditions is still PV equals NRT, but now our P is this, P plus A over A times N over V squared and our V is V minus N B equals NRT. All right, so if you ever get into a situation where you need to figure out one of the variables of a real gas, meaning a real gas not under ideal conditions, and that will be stated in a problem if that's the case, you will have tables available to look up the constant A 
which is dependent on a particular gas and the constant B. And then you plug and chug from there. All right, folks, that's it for today. Have a good one.